Hi everybody, my name is Matthias Rella. Uh, I'm an independent uh, web app developer and consultant. And yeah, thanks to the organizers for giving me this opportunity to uh, give you a short preview, a lightning talk um, of my regular talk, which I'm going to give at the Elm Europe conference in Paris next week. Um, Elm, a few words on Elm, if you haven't heard of it, it's a very delightful functional programming language for building reliable web apps. Um, you can check it out at elmlang.org. Um, there is these days a long-awaited release going to be published. So if you want to try Elm, perhaps when the release is out, of course, it's the best time to do this. Um, well, but today's talk is not about Elm, but I'm going to show a little demo afterwards, which is written in Elm, of course, and you will see Elm all around um, in the examples, but not Elm code, just the word Elm, so that you remember it. Um, well, my talk is about CRDTs and reactive applications. Um, <clears throat> well, CRDT stands for conflict-free replicated data types. And why do they matter for reactive applications? So let's just recap what are the important properties of a reactive system. So we need um, it, it to be responsive, elastic, resilient, and message-driven. And conflict-free replicated data types can cater for exactly that. An application which is backed up by a CRTT um, can be very responsive because data changes can be um, merged into your data structure very fast. It can, it can be elastic because you can easily replicate the data stored in your CRTT across nodes and all the nodes can work on this data independently. It is resilient because, um, as it says, it is conflict-free. It's a conflict-free replicated data type, so it even works even if there are failures, even if not all the data arrives, or data arrives multiple times. And it is um, CRDTs are message-driven, and so it also fits very well with reactive application. So this is just for a kind of a motivation so that you know why the CRDTs are important for you as developers building reactive applications. Okay, so what's actually the problem um, you're dealing here with is collaborative editing, people making concurrent changes to data. For example, a text document to uh, people, Alice and Bob, if you haven't known them before. Um, they are both editing the same document, for instance, um, kind of Google Docs thing, and works quite well, but they must be online to do that. As soon as the internet connection is lost, they cannot access this document, so um, it is not actually a reactive system because it is no longer responsive. As we have seen before, a reactive system needs to be responsive and resilient. So a reactive system should, should be able to cope with such a situation that the internet connection is lost so that the user can still work with the system. So we can fix that using CRTTs. Surprise! So what is a CRTT in detail? Let me give you a quote which I found on the internet. Um, the CRTTs are data types on which the same set of operations yields always the same outcome, regardless of order of execution and duplication of these operations. <coughs> so <clears throat> when we have concurrent changes, we have operations on our data, it doesn't matter in which order and it doesn't matter uh, yeah, actually, it's these three things, okay? It doesn't matter whether the operations have been grouped. It doesn't matter whether the order of the operations has been changed. It always seems to use the same out outcome. And it shouldn't matter 
that if we have the same operation applied twice, it should um, yield also the same. It should only um, uh, have the effect of the operation being applied once. Um, so with CRTTs, we we um, don't need a kind of consensus algorithm nodes. Don't need to um, kind of uh, make clear when something might be edited. You don't need to lock data. You don't, there's no blocking at all. Just operations get merged into the data structure, and it is there. And and if if all nodes get all the operations eventually, then they all have the same data state. Okay, let me give you an example. Very simple example. Counter. Um, this counter, this CRDT, has one operation. It's called add number. And each operation has a UUID so that it is unique. And the data structure for the CRDT is just a list which keeps all those operations. And if we have, for instance, five operations, with, with different um, values on this of this adding, no matter which in which order these operations arrive in our on our node, in our system, it always will re, um, result in the sum of eleven. So uh, yet you can imagine that this is easy to to merge, easy to implement, and. You can, you can be sure that all the nodes eventually have the same outcome. Okay, this is quite simple, but what about text, for instance? There are CRTTs for text or sequential data, and I want to present you LSEC. So uh, LSEC is in its um, in the beginning, we just have an array. An empty array of 16 free slots. And for instance, we type in the word or the two words Elm Rocks. So what does it do? We get the character E, it allocates um, a free slot at position zero, it does that pseudo randomly, and we get L, it allocates a free space between zero and 16 and says randomly put it here at slot number two and so on and so on until we have um, all our characters in our in our data structure and this can of course then be serialized to down rocks as you can see there are spaces left in between somewhere because it might be that someone wants to add more characters in between not just at the end so how can we we leave free spaces so that someone can insert or something. So for instance, if someone wants to write Elm Europe rocks, <coughs> so he needs to insert the word Europe, then first types E. So E goes into slot 6, for instance. Then he types U, or she, and there is no free space between 6 and 7. So what is happening? We need another layer, which is um, which can keep all um, letters which might be there between E and R, up to 32 letters. Again, it, is, it assigns randomly slots to the, to the rest of these characters. And if we need more of these layers, we can add more and more and more. And this way, each character in our text has a unique position, a unique ID, which never changes. So we have these insert operations. Insert, Alice is the user ID, and we have the path, which is the position of this character in, the, in, our, in our CRDT, 12, and we have the value, the K. And on the second level, the ID is then composed of the indexes of these two layers, so six, as the position of the second layer and for the position in the second layer. And 
we have another operation of course just inserting would be boring we also want to remove stuff so we just say remove for instance for or remove six comma three whatever and we can have this, all these operations in any order they can come into our in our into our application in any order it will always yield this So how does this look like in a more realistic example if we have two parties editing both have an empty um, uh, data structure in the beginning empty C or T Alice inserts Elm so we see this then she sends these operations these four insert operations to Bob Bob applies them to his data structure and he gets the same result then they do something weird, they are making a concurrent change on their data structure. Alice writes rocks and Bob writes rules. So what will happen if they exchange the data? We keep them both. We can have, in LSEX, we can have um, a multi-value. No, actually, it's, 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 it's my invention. Not, not my invention, but my addition to LSEX, it's not in the original paper, but um, we can keep um, both versions, but map to the user ID. And this way, um, we also we can keep all, all, all changes, nothing is lost, and <clears throat> we can still, um, on the application level, decide which of these two versions we, sh we, demos we, we show. But the important thing is, is here, um, the, users, the data structure is not locked or users are not forced to merge things. It just um, continues to run the data structure. You can still use it even if you have these two versions in place, if, even if you have two characters in one slot. And that's why it is called conflict-free. Okay, and finally, a third party can, could come in and Bob, for instance, could send the full history of operations to this third party. <clears throat> the third party could, can apply it to its empty um, um, CRDT and will arrive at the same result. The third one, for instance, call, let's call him Charles, um, doesn't even need to know Alice. Alice could relay her operations through Bob and Charles will receive all these changes eventually. Okay, how do you feel? All right. <laughs> They're both there. There's no final version. There is um, rocks. We have R mapped to the use ID of Alice here, and we have R mapped to, this is a bad example, we have O. And you respectively map to the user IDs of these two. And at the, at the application layer, we can decide um, which which we would like to show. We could decide just show Alice version or sh show both. Make a make a nifty grifty interface where it indicates there is concurrent stuff. The third guy coming can also select which version he wants to see. Yes, he gets all the operations of of all the other users. Even those he don't know, he doesn't know. And if he wants to continue the work, he has to decide which work he wants to continue. No, no, no. This is some application specific. Um, oh. mm, what should, what should happen with these two versions? Okay. Um, the important part is Charles can insert Europe or whatever, um, and doesn't care about these two versions at all. Okay, I also have a demo. So. Yeah, just one question. Uh, is this not what uh, you would normally call a conflict? It's just not resolved? <laughs> yes, yes, it's a good question, I know. <laughs> but um, it is on the, uh, of course, it cannot, it cannot merge conf or to resolve conflicts on the application level because it would um, need kind of an, uh, um, artificial intelligence or something, okay? Um, but on the technical level, we have no conflicts. Okay. Okay. 
so it's okay. um it's no locking if i always compare it to git if you if you merge if you have two commits and they have changes in the same um, part of a file then you have to you have to decide you have to do a merge otherwise you cannot continue your work on this file you are blocked mm -hmm. And this cannot happen with the CRDT. You are never blocked. There is even for Atom, recently there was a, 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 a new plugin or kind of, um, which allows for collaborative editing in Atom built on a CRDT. But I forgot how it is called, actually. Teletype. Hmm? It's called Teletype. Teletype, okay, yeah. Are they getting a copy or a pointer? Hmm? Are they getting a copy or a pointer to the version of the uh, Charles Blake? He get, he's getting a copy. Right. Each node has a copy, so um, it's replicated, so actually. Decides to change something to, uh, Charles Blake. Yes, it only knows if they send their op ops. Right. Okay. Do we still have time for a short demo? Yeah, okay. So that's a very simple collaborative text editor. <coughs> um, it's peer to peer, so making a web RTC data channel connection. So we have here the name of this user, Bobet, and Peers, which have, um, yeah, into a peer is this one, loser. <laughs> <laughs> it's randomly chosen, it's not, it's not my choice. Um, yeah, well, and to demonstrate you this, um, uh, so Bobet writes hello world, and now he connects to loser, and yeah. And Bobet sends these insert operations to loser, loser, and loser um, uh, applies them, and he sees hello world. And loser, of course, can also hello world, and this he sees this um, updates immediately. And I would invite you now to join this demo. I would like to see how it works. So everyone who has his laptop open, um, stop your work, start listening, and enter. Uh, it's called brightdb.com slash demo. It should be the same thing. Now we see more guys showing up. <coughs> And what we can could do now is, um, I must admit it doesn't work on the mobile. Just um, for just for viewing, you can only read it um, because it is uh, catching keyboard events, and keyboard events don't work on mobile for whatever reason. And well, what I, yeah, what we could, we, we I don't even need to connect to all those peers. To get all the, the changes, so someone just writes something, or or are we getting errors here? Okay, <laughs> it's not that resilient yet. Um. Just gonna, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's it's it's. There are many mobile people, I guess. No one is, no one is typing. I want to see someone to type. Hey guys with the laptops. <laughs> typing doesn't work. You have to click a name. You have to click a name to con make a connection. Perhaps you just click on Agnes. So, so or loser. A mesh network, so, uh, <laughs> so it's a, um, yeah, you can, um, um, finally see something. Okay. Oh, and it's getting into Reddit. 
<laughs> yes, this should indicate that we have here two concurrent um, changes. Uh, obviously, by yeah, okay. it doesn't work yet. You don't even see this color here. Yeah, what I've what i what I've experienced is that it says it is connected, but it doesn't show up here that it is connected. So it still needs more. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bring it. <laughs> yeah, sorry, but enter doesn't. Okay, that's. I mean, but yeah, you can ref refresh it, and I could um, try to connect. Oh yeah, no. Okay, now Gusella gave me the data back. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs>